But once we lost our business in three years, where we were half a million dollar in debt, that escalated everything. What was your first business? Uh, our first business was with my husband. We did, um, we were like training coordinators. Basically, we, we uh, work with company to find trainers for, to meet their needs, right? Uh, so we'll get the project and then we'll look for trainers to match their needs. That was our first uh, business together. When did you and, and your husband meet? We met in college before uh, we went off to the U.S. together. Well, so, so you both went to, age. Yeah, you both went to Missouri together? Yes. Was he also doing his MBA? No, he didn't. He just did his undergraduate. So we, I, we were, I was there for the undergraduate and then he left and then I continued to do my MBA in the same university. And during all this, you are discovering emotional healing work and on your own or was there like a resource that you came across or a book that woke you up to this idea? So maybe I'll give you some timeline. So we met in uh, 1990. This is our 30th year so we have met. Wow. So we've, yeah. Uh, then we went to school. There was already a lot of drama at the time between the two of us because, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the, in the conversation, I was afraid of anger, right? But what was happening was uh, sometimes my anger would come in out, an outburst, right, in our relationship. Um, so, you know, at that time, we have no knowledge how to deal with it. You know, I was still focusing a lot on school. So, but things started already during that when we were going out. Um, he came back to Malaysia. Uh, we got married in 96. So, you know, we knew each other for six years. Right, and I had, uh, uh, had our son in '98. But once our son came, our first business started, and then we had a uh, so things were not like okay, it was just you know, there were dramas constantly. But once we lost our business in three years, where we were half a million dollar in debt, that escalated everything like you know, everything started escalating in our relationship the pain, the, everything started escalating. It was then I started, you know looking into reading more motivational, I, I call this motivational kind of materials where Jim Ron and, you know, think positive, right? Because I was wanting to do something about it. It got me to a certain point. Like I said, it got me somewhere. Um, uh, 2002 was where it was really hard. 2005, we started making money, quite a bit of money again, you know, thinking that, okay, maybe I've resolved some of this stuff. But I realized when we were making money, things were still not okay. And then 2006 is where I really started discovering the importance of emotional healing. Got it. So it. Together now. Yes. And then at one point, you guys were really on the edge with being super in debt. You had two kids at this point. Yes. What kept you together? What keeps a marriage together when it is on the brink of being destroyed by many different external circumstances? Commitment to each other. You know, really for me, that's how I've I've seen it. I've looked at myself and. What kept me going? Commitment was a big thing. I, I, you know, there are, I think, three major points that we really looked at. Perhaps it's best for us not to be together. I remember my biggest struggle initially also was my, were my children. Like, what would it impact on them as well, right? If we choose to divorce and go separate ways. So that was hard for me. But what carried us through, I think, throughout all those times is our commitment. What was it like when you were seriously considering divorce and were you living together? Did you take some time apart? How did you come back from that? We did uh, kind of talk about separation at a time, you know, let's see how that goes, right? What's ironic, I would tell you, is this, um, this is I think the second time that happened. Uh, that's when I conceived my daughter. So it kind of, even though when we were doing that, it's like, okay, that doesn't work right now because I have another one coming. Okay, maybe spirit has, you know, at that time for me, it's like, okay, what? Now I would say what spirit has a plan, but then I was like, okay, there's a totally different, it changed, you know, because we were in a new country as well at a time too, here in Canada. So that's a, quite a fascinating history there. I'm sure that you've, you've carried some of those lessons forward for, from those time periods. Is there anything you do on a regular basis as a couple that keeps everything in harmony? Any, any best practices, any habits that you have? I think it's important both individual knows uh, the values of each individual, 
Um, I know specifically, and Zach and I, we've talked about this already, you know, uh, because of the work that we do. I, I married my dad, pretty much. He married his mom, pretty much, because it was just un our unconscious that drawn us so that we could actually work on this stuff to heal, right? So, you know, the dramas that come out is an opportunity for each one of us to heal. So, you know, those are the work that for us to do individually. But a couple of things that I find it's important to know is our values. Like there's some values, it's different. Like what he values and some of the stuff that I value, it's different. And I think having clarity of that is really important to the relationship work. Like he knows family is a big deal for me. Like, because I've trained, I've learned over time from my parents, like my mom makes a point every Sunday night, we'll all have dinner together, for example, because it's family time, right? So that's important to me. And that's why my family is important to me. Right. And, but he grew up slightly different. Like that's not their environment. So understanding our values, I think it's really important um, to, you know, really come up with agreements that work, you know, in co how to communicate. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important. So over time, you know, we've cost correct our agreements, right? So for example, uh, he may need a longer time to process his emotion, right? I need a shorter time and it could be different for a different individual. You know, I don't think it's a gender. It's just really very individual. However, you know, coming with an agreement, what works that we all both can meet at a point of resolution, right? So uh, I, I like to get things over with in a shorter time, but he needs a little bit more time to process whatever's coming up for him. So where's that meeting point? You know, so agreements, like agreements, how would you communicate, you know, respectfully? Um, also, you know, uh, these are some things that you teach in C's, like saying what is, you know, giving each other the ability to speak with responsibility, saying what we need or what's really going on. Like very often I find we won't say, you know, I'm really afraid right now that you might, uh, uh, you might be uh, thinking about this, like really saying what's really going on. Cause we don't say that. We think the person might know or might assume they know, but saying that out changes uh, the communication, you know, really owning, right. What's happening for ourselves. I think that's really important. And I think the last bit I would say is ability to communicate your needs. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. Like, you know, right now, this is what I need. As a woman, you know, very often we think the man knows what we need. They could read our mind. Like, you know, they, 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 I expected Zach to know I needed that. And if he doesn't demonstrate it, I get upset. Like, didn't you know? But over time, what I've learned is to tell him, like, right now, I feel uh, really down. What I need is, you know, you taking care of me right now, giving me hugs or, you know, telling him what I need instead of expecting him to know what I need. You know, this is some of the stuff that has supported us in, in making it work. It reminds me of this quote that one of the major sources of arguments in, in couples and deterioration of, of the relationship is broken expectations that were never communicated in the first place. People having these expectations that they didn't really say and then are, they get mad because the other person just didn't meet them, even though they weren't communicated in the first place. It reminds me a lot of that. And it's just basically getting things out in the open, clearing the air constantly, and, and having those checks and balances, like you said, about staying on the same page. Yeah, I think that's really important. That's something that we've learned over time. You know, in the, when we first started, like I, said, I expected him to know what I need, what I wanted, which, you know, that's not really possible. I think it's important to be able to forgive. Forgiveness is also a big piece because I've seen also uh, couples that come to us for, or me for support or uh, uh, counseling sometimes, um, being able to let go what had happened. Because if we don't let go what had happened in the past and keep hanging on to it, that's not going to serve the relationship. We all make mistakes and, and we, we do our best where we are at at that time. As we all continue to grow, things will shift, right? And I think forgiveness is a big, big key uh, to really support and sustain a relationship, allowing yourself to let go. Just a couple of days ago, I was listening to Carolyn Miss, right? She's a teacher, intuitive healer. I love she said that, you know, forgiveness is, you know, it's, there's no reason you can give for forgiveness. It's unreasonable. Because if you're wanting to find a reason to forgive, you, can, you won't be able to. It just takes you to just say, I'm going to forgive and let it go. Mm. So I love that when she said that. That is a great perspective because the other option is just to let resentment build. Yeah, and that will be toxic to the relationship itself. Thank you.